What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We're going with core plays for week 14 of the NFL season on DraftKings and FanDuel. If you enjoy, make sure you have a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. Let's dive right into it. And as always, if you're ever interested in anything you see on the screen behind me, it's available completely free for a week over my Patreon using the link down below in the description or the pinned comment. Access to the projections that I use each and every single week for DraftKings and FanDuel, my optimizer, ownership projections, my cheat sheet going over cash games and tournaments, and all the data that I look at every single week to help me build successful lineups. If you want to check that out, you know where to find it. Link is down below. Let's get into it here and talk some quarterbacks and whether you want to spend up, go in the middle, or down low. I think we have several options this weekend. Keep in mind the quarterback position is foundational for your builds because we can like so many studs in the slate like Christian McCaffrey, Stephon Diggs, Keenan Allen. But let's say, for example, I go with a Brock Purdy stack. As much as I like those kind of guys, I'm prioritizing Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, maybe a DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett, JSN as a run back option before I start putting those studs in. So while you can add them together, if they do fit, you build around your stacks, not the other way around. So let's go up top here. We have the two guys in the same game facing off, which should be a banger, 48 and a half point over under Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes. These games tend to be great. We've seen in the playoffs many times. I think we all remember a couple of years ago, I forget what year it was, maybe 2021, but Allen versus Mahomes, absolute monster performance from both guys. We went into overtime at the end. It was just an incredible Incredible game. One and a half point spread here at home in KC for Patrick Mahomes. I like both guys. Obviously, my preference would be Josh Allen because it gives you that rushing upside because the numbers in the air are pretty similar so far this year. Allen just edging him out touchdown wise and yardage. And he also gives you that rushing upside and rushing touchdown upside that Patrick Mahomes doesn't quite offer. Mahomes has been pretty good at scrambling this year, but he obviously doesn't have the rushing touchdowns to give you that nice, safe, baked in floor. I would say both defenses are actually somewhat pretty solid versus quarterbacks. The Chiefs are allowing the eighth fewest points per game and the Bills the 12th fewest, but I think these offenses are good enough to overcome that, so I don't really have any concerns here. If you're playing tournaments, I like both, but in cash games, not really the route I am looking to go this weekend. If you are playing cash, I think there's two options you want to decide with, and that's going to be either Justin Fields or Brock Purdy to me. But their prices, they project the best point per dollar wise, and they feel like the safest options. With Justin Fields, he gets a great matchup versus Detroit. They have struggled mightily versus rushing quarterbacks. So you've seen that with Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Fields himself. I believe he has a couple games over 100 yards rushing, specifically versus Detroit. So I love the spot versus the Lions this weekend at home. And while he's not the best pocket passer by any means, less than 200 passing yards per game and only throwing the ball 24 times per game with a 64% completion percentage, he's getting you 50 yards on the ground over six design runs. That's not including scrambles. He's always going to have rushing touchdown upside. And the Lions are currently allowing the fourth most points per game the quarterback position you don't have to stack with justin fields if you are playing cash games it's by no means a necessity but if you are playing tournaments at least throwing dj Moore on there i think it's a pretty good way to go about it because we have seen he's pretty much a lock for 10 plus targets at this point but i also think brock purdy is a fine option as well this 49ers team looks poised to win the super bowl this year at this point 28.5 implied team total at home versus seattle which is a pretty soft defense overall 46 and a half point over under 10 and a half point spread in their favor which i guess is the only concern but i am not really too worried about it on the season brock purdy 270 passing yards per game, nearly two passing touchdowns, 9.6 yards per attempt. This is an offense that likes to run the ball, but they are very efficient through the air. And he has great weapons in George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and also CMC out of the backfield. And the Seahawks are currently 20th versus fantasy quarterbacks. And he's the MVP favorite as of right now. And honestly, I'm not sure if he deserves it 100%, but I cannot argue with anybody that says he deserves to be the MVP this year because he has been playing his role quite exceptionally. So far this season, the price keeps coming up. I remember he was in that 5K range a couple of weeks ago, so we can keep playing him here until he hits 7K because that's honestly probably where he should be. Like, I know he does not have quite the name value as a guy like Patrick Mahomes, but if you're looking at the numbers this year, I mean, you've almost pretty much wanted Brock Purdy over Patrick Mahomes. So keep taking the discount here. This is too good of a team for him not to succeed week in and week out. Plus, stacking with him is by no means difficult. Like, if you want to stack with Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, you are eating a ton of salary in guys like Travis Kelsey and Stephon Diggs, and both guys are run back options there, which are very expensive, but with Brock Purdy, I mean, Debo Samuel, Brian Oak are usually fairly priced, especially Debo. George Kittle's in the 5K range, and you corner back with a guy like DK Metcalf if you want, so really not that hard to stack him up. And then we have Russell Wilson, who I'm okay with. He's not my favorite option this week, but I do think him and Cortland Sutton with a run back of Keenan Allen is a halfway decent stack this year. I know the Broncos don't really throw the ball a ton. He's averaging less than 200 passing yards per game, throwing the ball 25 times per game, and completing 67% of his passes, but the touchdowns have been good for Russell Wilson, and this is a great matchup versus the Chargers. We're allowing the fifth most points to get into the position. So I'm fine with that little mini stack. But other than that, I'm probably not going to get the too much rust this weekend. And then we have my junker game of the week, which I tend to have the past few weekends, but Indy versus Cincy. So we have two backup quarterbacks in Minshew and Jake Browning, but I really don't hate this game. It's a one and a half point spread, 43.5 over under. And it's kind of easy just to stack up. Like if you want to go with Gardner Minshew, 
Michael Pittman, the running back with a guy like Jamar Chase. You can certainly do that, or you can do the same exact stack and you just take Browning and then you can add in T. Higgins or Josh Downs, whichever way you want to go about it. Also like Zach Moss and Joe Mixon in this game. And everyone's pretty cheap for the most part. I know Pittman's in the 7K range. I forget what Jamar Chase is, but they're obviously not quite to the levels when we saw Joe Burrow. So I'm fine with either. Jake Browning looked amazing versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. I know their defense has been brutal this year, but I wouldn't say either defense in this game should be too imposing. Bengals are currently 25th versus quarterbacks, and the Colts are 19th. So if you're looking for a cheaper stack this week, I don't mind either quarterback. All right, so heading over to our build here. Like I said, this is a very foundational piece to our lineup, and don't copy and paste what I use here. I say it every single week, but to anybody new here, I am simply just grabbing a player or two from each position that we talk about and putting it together in a single entry type build that would make sense going over the rules that I typically use, which is at least one pass catcher with my quarterback, typically two, but if I go with a rushing quarterback like Justin Fields, I think one is just fine. And then I typically try to find a run back option while it's not 100% necessary. It is something I like to do quite often. So for me in this build, it's either gonna be Brock Purdy or Justin Fields. Those are my two favorite quarterbacks this week. Obviously I like others for tournaments, but let's roll with Justin Fields here. And then we're probably going to be having DJ Moore. As far as the run back option is concerned, we'll have to try to figure that one out. And moving on to the ball carriers. I have a smaller group this week, but I do feel pretty confident in this condensed smaller group. But we'll start up top with the man CMC. He almost feels like an auto play this week. And I hate to say anybody's a lock, but if you were playing cash games, he is pretty much a lock. Like, it's going to be really hard to avoid him. It's very easy to fit him in this week. He's 9200 bucks. He should be over $10,000, I think, over on DraftKings. So just keep getting the discount. 28.5 implied team total for the 49ers here. 10.5 point favorites. They're playing at home. And if you're looking at Seattle this season versus running backs, allowing the fifth most points game to the position, he just put up 34 points versus them on Thanksgiving, and nothing has really changed here. He's been efficient. He's one of the most talented backs in football, and he's averaging over 22 opportunities per game this year. Five yards per carry, rushing touchdown per game, 17 carries, and a near 20% target share in this offense. And also, if you are playing Brock Purdy, you can play CMC with him. I don't think that's any issue. But yeah, CMC, definitely one of the top plays on the entire slate. I believe I have him projected for four more points higher than anybody else. And there's no Tyreek Hill on this main slate. So that's part of the reason. But yeah, definitely love CMC. I'm going to be very highly on those on the issue. We're looking for a pivot option off of CMC. We have Alvin Kamara here, 8,200 bucks. Gets that dream matchup versus the Panthers defense, who is allowing the third most points per game. During that position, over 110 rushing yards and 1.4 rushing touchdowns per game at 28.3. Fancy points allowed to running backs this season. And what we love Kamara is he's pretty much Christian McCaffrey, but just in a worse offense. He's averaging over 22 opportunities per game, very similar to CMC. Both have a 31% weight opportunity share, both have close to a 20% target share. And Kamara is getting over six and a half catches and seven and a half targets per game and over 45 receiving yards. Just not quite as efficient. Like I said, the offense isn't as good, but this is about as good of a spot as you can ask for for Alvin Kamara this week. So if you're not playing CMC, I think Kamara is a fine pivot. And they have Joe Mixon and Zach Moss facing off versus each other in the same game. And while Zach Moss was heavy, heavy chalk last week, kind of busted. Got you seven to eight fantasy points. I do think he was in the Millie Maker lineup, though, kind of in spite of him. Not like he really got you there. But he was cheap, and he got the volume. And like I said, the production was not there, but the opportunity was, and that's all you can project for for DFS. So we saw over 20 opportunities for Zach Moss, and there's nothing changing this week. He got work inside the 10-yard line. He had a bad touchdown opportunities. So same exact thing here, just a little bit more expensive at 5900 bucks. But I'm going to go right back to the wall here, looking like he's going to be very chalky once again. But he's been good with the football this year. About four and a half yards per carry, averaging 17 opportunities per game this year. And then, we, like I said, we just saw 20 last weekend. Matchup versus the Bengals, pretty much mid-pack here. They're 18th versus running backs, but I have no issue going back to Zach Moss. Joe Mixon had a big day. As he got a couple goal line plunges there and was used heavily in the passing. I believe he had seven targets in that game. It's a really good matchup versus the Colts. They're currently 29th versus running backs, laying over 105 rushing yards per game and a rushing touchdown. Now, Jake Browning's going to play well. That opens up the entire offense, which does make Mixon playable once again. Then Javante Williams, I kind of get annoyed with this backfield because we do have Samaj P. Ryan, we have McLaughlin, so it can be a bit annoying, but he is averaging 17 opportunities per game this year, 14 on the ground and targets on a 12.5% target share. Good matchup versus the Chargers here, 22nd versus running back. So it's basically just a matchup thing here in volume, but I do prefer Zach Moss, $100 more. Then we have the Kansas City duo of Jarek McKinnon and Clyde Edwards Elaire, $4,200 and $4,800. No Isaiah Pacheco this week, who I would have liked, but with him being out, that definitely opens up some value because we know the RB position in Kansas City is always going to be a valuable asset. And while Jarek McKinnon might be the guy some people flock to because we saw how good he was at the end of the season last year, and with Jekyll being out, obviously you would assume he could slide into a bigger role. Keep in mind, though, he's not like a big-bodied back that's going to get a lot of carries in between the tackles. So I'm assuming CEH is pretty much going to get that Isaiah Pacheco role for the most part, although we'll probably see Jarek McKinnon more involved in the passing game than we have in recent weeks, I know he's been out for a couple of weeks, but I mean, we've seen Isaiah Pacheco pretty much getting the bulk of the work, even through the passing game. So we'll probably see somewhat of a Jarek McKinnon role that we saw last year 
at the end of the season. And I'm not saying he's going to get 30 plus points every single week like it seemed like it, but I think he'll at least be more valuable here. 300 bucks, so I think he's worthy of tournament play. Scott Edwards Alaire, if you want to play him in cash games, I am fine with that. 25 point implied team total here versus Buffalo, who's not that great versus running backs, currently 21st versus the position, but both guys are certainly in play. Although if we're talking goal line carries, that is more than likely going to be CEH. And moving on to running backs, since I don't have Brock Purdy, that means I'm probably not going to be too heavy on the passing attack in this build. I can't say for sure, but I definitely want CMC because I want a piece of that 49ers offense in the majority of my lineups this weekend because they're going to put up points. So I'm not sure exactly where it's going to be. Most likely it'll be a CMC in a large chunk of it, but it should be enough to go around. So let's plug him in here, 9,200 bucks. And we have plenty of value at running back this week, whether it's Zach Moss, or the two Kansas City Chiefs running backs, so we shouldn't have too much of a concern there. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to go all the way down to CEH in this specific build, but for now, let's go with Zach Moss at the $900, I believe. And then if we have to go down to a CEH, maybe we can even play him in the flex. I am fine with either. And for the pass catchers, I typically spend the least amount of time talking about these guys because, yes, we could break down the individual matchups if we wanted, but waste of a time, in my opinion. So I have Justin Fields, so I am pretty much locked into DJ Moore, as much as I like, might like a guy. Like DK Metcalf, Debo Samuel, that's my number one priority. I'm not saying we can't fit them in, but if you have Russell Wilson you're playing Cortland Sutton, you're playing Keenan Allen as much as you'd want to play Stephon Diggs or Jamar Chase, that just makes the most sense. If you were going with Brock Purdy, get Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, run that back with a guy like DK Metcalf. Try to correlate your lineup as best as possible. For me, single entries, three max type builds. My usual rule if it's a pocket passer, I want two pass catchers with them and a run back option. If it's a more mobile quarterback like a Justin Fields or Lamar Jackson. Using one pass catcher is totally fine because we get those extra points with our legs and they just don't offer as much passing yard. Like with Patrick Mahomes, it makes sense to do two pass catchers because if he's going to throw the ball for 300 yards, well, I know one guy is not going to get 300 receiving yards, so it probably makes sense to spread that out to at least two. Justin Fields, he might get 100 passing yards, but it might just all go to DJ Moore. So that makes the most sense in my opinion. If we're looking for the best cash game wide receivers this week, I think guys like Keenan Allen will be heavily targeted. You basically just want guys with roughly around a 30% target share up top. Michael Pittman's an excellent cash game option. He has been heavily, heavily targeted this season and back-to-back -back really good weeks for him. Let me pull up the target share numbers for you. But in your 32% target share for Michael Pittman this year, I think either 49 or wide receiver would make sense in cash. DJ Moore is also a fine cash game option, even if you don't have Justin Fields. 29.5% target share in the season, and we have seen the targets very high in recent weeks. If you're looking for cheap cash game options at the wide receiver position. Elijah Moore, if Amari Cooper happens to be out, he would be probably one of my favorite plays at the position, especially down low below $5,000 because he gets a great matchup versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. And if Joe Flacco was the quarterback, well, we saw him get double digit targets last week when Amari Cooper went down early. That wouldn't be surprised if we see that once again. Plus, Elijah Moore, we know he's a talented wide receiver. Drake London's fine as well in a dream matchup versus the Buccaneers. They're bottom three in points allowed to the position this season. Uh, Rasheed Rice, if you're looking for game stacks, he's more of a tournament option. Josh Downs, another guy that's fine for tournaments. Garrett Wilson gets Zach Wilson back, which upgrade, downgrade from Tim Boyle, I'm not really sure, but he still gets heavily targeted. He's only $5,500 versus the Houston Texans, but really any of the guys down low that I have here are fine for cash games, but probably specifically Elijah Moore, Drake London, and Garrett Wilson. So for me, outside of DJ Moore, the wide receiver position is pretty wide open for me as far as the route that I want to take because well, I typically want a run back option. It's not always a necessity. And I don't want to force it because I already have CMC and he was pretty expensive at $9,000. We only have $4,300 left for our remaining five spots at this point. And Amon Ross St. Brown would be the most likely candidate to run it back with. We could also look at Sam Laporta. But if I plugged in Amon Ross St. Brown, we're at $3,300 left for our remaining spots, which is really not that great because I don't really like any of the punt wide receivers this week. So that's probably not a viable way to go. And San Laporta is kind of expensive too at 6100 bucks. Now we still have some extra money compared to using Amon Ross St. Brown. So I'm not exactly sure the route I want to take yet. So we're going to leave the remaining spots blank and we'll move on to tight end and defense and we'll figure it out. And moving on to tight ends, we have Travis Kelsey up top. And if you are using Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, you want to use him as your run back option. That's probably the only way I'm using Travis Kelsey unless in cash games, I happen to have the extra salary for him, but I highly doubt that. But we do know he's the best tight end in the league. So if you had the money for him, great. If not, not a big deal. On the opposite side of that game, Dalton Kincaid is much more affordable. Now, Dawson Knox, I believe, could potentially come back, but I don't really think he's going to be much of an impact on Kincaid. But he's kind of established himself, I would hope at least, as a tight end one in that offense. They drafted him in the first round for a reason. He looks great out there when he's had opportunities, so I think he's fine as well. And if you need a run back option in that game or a stacking option and you don't want to spend $8,000 for Kelsey, that is certainly an option. Cole Komet would be a fine option with the lineup that we have right now because we have Justin Fields. So if you're looking for a secondary option with them, because the other wide receivers in that offense are basically just worthless. 
So I think Komet would be fine. David Njoku, as long as Joe Flacco is the quarterback, I'm fine with him, especially if Amari Cooper is out. That's just more targets to go around, and it's a good matchup versus Jacksonville. Kyle Pitts, I just like the passing attack versus the Buccaneers, although the problem is the Falcons. Awful quarterback and Ritter and awful passing attack in general, but I am fine with Pitts and London this week, but I have no interest on in the quarterback. Then Brevin Jordan, no Dalton Schultz expected once again this week. So $3,100, while he's not quite $2,500 like he was last week as a free square, he's still very cheap. He ran 70% of the routes last weekend, and he still was fine for DFS purposes. I forget the exact amount he had, but it was actually somewhat of a decent day for being absolute bare minimum. And while he's a little bit more expensive this time, if he's going to get a 60-70% of the routes here, and the Jets are a tough defense, but that's especially on the outside. So maybe Brevin Jordan gets more targets shoveled his way. With no Tank Dell and Nico Collins potentially seeing a lot of the Sauce Gardner treatment. And same old, same old for defense. What I typically do is just try to find the first one that looks viable from flat team total wise, and I scroll all the way down. And I don't really like the super cheap options. I do like some of these guys in the 3K range. So the Browns versus Jacksonville, only a 15.25 implied team total. They're playing at home, three point favorites. I got them projected for nine points. That's a 3X value. I don't mind that at all, especially if Trevor Lawrence happens to be out. Also, don't mind the Ravens who are not super expensive at $3,300. They're facing the Rams at home, 16.5 implied team total with some bad weather in that game, 7.5 point spread in their favor, and 9.5 point for their projections, which is right around where the Browns are. So for me personally, I like the Browns, like the Ravens quite a bit. If you are trying to dumpster dive, it's not pretty down there, but the Jets and the Falcons don't look terrible either. Cutting over to our build, I am not really sure we're going to be able to afford a runback option from the Lions. And like I always say, it's preferred way to go. But since we have that Russian quarterback, Justin Fields, we have one stacking option with them. I'm actually fine with having that as our stack. And then we'll just fill it in with some of our more favorite plays that happen to fit our build. It's a little bit unconventional compared to what I usually do, but that's totally fine given the circumstances. So I want to see what actual kind of money we had to work with. So let's plug in a cheaper defense here. I like the Browns at $3,000. I think they make the most sense, especially if Trevor Lawrence happens to be out, which because we know how good the Browns defense has been. Lowest total of the week against them. I believe there might be one lower, I think. Oh, that was the... Uh, the Patriots heading into the Steelers game, but obviously they went over that with 21 fantasy points. We have 4,600 bucks left once we hit the Browns in here. So tight end, we could probably just plug in Brevin Jordan as another cheap option here, just 3,100 bucks. And if you're looking at what he did in Dalton Schultz absent last week, three catches and four targets, 64 yards, and had a couple of chunk plays, 9.4 fantasy points. If you can get us eight to 10 points here, I will take that all day. And guys, uh, no tank down this week as well, which does open up some targets to go around. So we have just over $5,000 left for our remaining spots. So we can go pretty balanced. So if we're thinking about games that we liked and we want to try to get some cheaper exposure to, I think that would probably be a good starting point. Like I like the Chiefs and Bills game. So playing somebody like Rasheed Rice just to try to get exposure to that, I think would make some sense. He's established himself as the wide receiver one in that Chiefs offense. And I think points are certainly going to be scored in that. Also like Garrett Wilson, and we kind of have like a little mini stack there. The Jets and Houston game with Garrett Wilson and Brevin Jordan going back to back right there. So for the flex spot, we have $4,600 left for our remaining position, which we could go with Elijah Moore. We could go with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I would say those are probably the top two options. When Amari Cooper went out last week, 12 targets for Elijah Moore, four catches. Also had nine targets the week prior, and that was without Joe Flacco. Seven targets, seven targets. So we should be locked in for at least six plus here. Out of Elijah Moore, if Amari Cooper is out, obviously the upside is even higher, especially if Joe Flacco happens to be under center. We have JSN, who I think is a viable option. And then, like I said, we do have uh, Clyde Alaire as well. So I'll leave that option blank. But I think overall, this is pretty decent roster construction. I know it's not our typical GBP stack build where we have our two pass catchers and a run back option. But I think it's fine given the circumstances, considering we have a very mobile quarterback. So we have Fields paired with DJ Moore, CMC, Zach Moss. Love those two running backs this week. Rasheed Rice trying to get exposure to that Chiefs Bills game. Garrett Wilson, Brevin Jordan, mini stack going on right there. Like I said, flex is open. Then we have the Browns defense who projects very well. And as per usual, I just want to run the optimizer here to see who is popping the most as of right now. Now it's Friday afternoon, so obviously this can change by the time Sunday kicks off. But this will hopefully give you guys a good idea on who's going to be popular on this slate because my projections aren't going to be too far off what everybody else has. And if you want to build your own lineups with the optimizer that I have, the projections that I'm using, you can find that link down below in the description. But anyway here, I just put some... Slight randomness on, so these are not the exact projections. I do not have the ownership projections up quite yet. I guess I have to run an update because we just got that Pacheco news, which is going to change things, obviously. But just some slight stacking settings here and randomness, like I said. And if we look at the guys populating the most, no surprise there. But CMC, despite being expensive, very easy fit this week. And I have him projected at roughly around 25 fantasy points. Next best guy is right around 19, 20. This as far as skill position players are concerned. So yeah, he's going to have a nice little edge there and he's going to pop a ton. 
Zach Moss, Brevin Jordan, two value plays, which makes it easy to fit in CMC, Brown's defense, JSN, which I'm assuming that's because Brock Purdy is getting thrown in a lot, and I do have a runback option just mandatory in these specific builds here. So JSN being cheap makes sense as the runback guy. Because if you're looking at the first lineup here, we have Brock Purdy, it's paired with Brandon Ayuk, and then we have JSN as our lone Seattle runback option here. But pretty much every guy that's popping right here, we did talk about at some point. So it looks like we're in agreement with the projections. At the very least, we're looking at the teams that are getting thrown in the most. San Francisco, which makes sense. Super high total and easy spot versus Seattle. Indy, Cleveland, Denver, Cincy, Houston, Seattle. The game stacks. No surprise there. San Francisco once again at the top. And like I said, my junker stack of the week. Cincinnati, Indianapolis. I definitely think it's a game to target overall because there's many good plays. I like both quarterbacks. I like Jamar Chase, I like Michael Pittman, both running backs. Look good, so I definitely don't hate that game. New York and Houston. Cleveland and Jacksonville has a couple cheap pieces. So. Yeah, not really too surprised. Like I said earlier, if you want access to this, link down in the description or the pinned comment to get a week for free. And with that being said, that's all I got for this week's video. So if you enjoyed, make sure you would like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer you. I wish you the best of luck this week, and I'll see you all next time.